Sorry about that. Yeah, you could probably see in the background that um, my uniform, well, part of my uniform now. Uh, this is a, what we, well, basically, along with the navy colors that we wear, navy blue colors, we can also wear um, bright blue colors or naturally white colors, at least be decent looking. If you know what I mean. So, you know, you know that in the last video I talked about Wild West Cowboys of Mesa in my cartoon flashback HD, of course, as I've reiterated there, or reiterated there, filmed in 1080p and 60 frames per second. Well, I wanted to talk about something else. I wanted to talk about something that got my attention, and I want to throw a shout out to Huey Toon Moore and Mr. Coat at thatfellowinthecoat.com and Huey's animated movie reviews. You see, recently they did an episode on Huey Toon Moore on uh, Huey Toon Moore's uh, video channel on Blimp. Uh, they did a top nine countdown of the best Pink Panther intros, um, mostly from the movies. You know, how you, they would always have those animated intros and sometimes a mixture of live action in it. They did that countdown, and I thought it was pretty good. And then at the end, uh, Mr. Coat decided to do an honorable, honorable mention, which was the intro for the Pink Panther show in 1993. Now, long story short, the Pink Panther show in 1993 was an attempt to revitalize and reboot uh, the Panther for the 90s and, in fact, do something that, I guess, they took a page from uh, Warner Brothers because this was at the time, I think, Warner Brothers was, uh, um, not was, but had uh, released this animated short. And that was, they took a page out of Warner, well not just Warner Brothers, but other animation, animated sources and I think this was also a year after of course the Tom and Jerry movie which not a lot of people like to speak of um, Warner Brothers not Warner Brothers, but MGM decided to do something that's not been done with the Panther and that's have him talk True, they've had him gasp ask and laugh and all that, but they've never had him talk until now. Now, recently, well, until then. Now, recently, another revival, revival on Cartoon Network and around the world called Pink Panther and Pals uh, came around, and Panther is the only one without a voice, going back to the silent Panther, which everybody likes. Well, I think it's ob I think it's too obvious of how popular Pink Panther is and was and still is. I mean, throughout the '60s, um, since his initial animated uh, introductions before each Pink Panther movie, um, he also had his share of his own animated shorts. Uh, uh, Deepata or Deepata, and Freely. Uh, both worked on these animated shorts that they did uh, for, I guess, theaters and for television. And they became massively popular, obviously. They helped really bring the Panthers' popularity to another level, in addition to him appearing in the animated intros for each of the Pink Panther movies. These animated shorts brought his popularity to another level that it allowed him to have his own show where he introduced newer characters uh, that would be associated with him as well as the fact that in the 1970s they had the all-new Pink Panther show and he also had various uh, primetime specials as well like he had I think two Christmas specials in the one in the 80s and in the 90s he had a Valentine's Day special and he had a few more but the one thing that you know, the Pink Panther could not avoid was following in the footsteps that several uh, several franchises, animated or not, were falling into when it came to Saturday morning cartoons. You see, back in the 80s and late 70s, 
one of the trends that was growing was to introduce kiddified versions of the characters. Now we know with the Muppets Take Manhattan we pretty much hadn't got an idea or a taste of what we were going to get uh, the following year with Muppet Babies, which went on to be a huge success. And you know, we also got, so, and that also, I should say, paved the way for shows like the Flintstone Kids, which lasted for a while, Pup Named Scooby-Doo, Tom and Jerry Kids, and of course, in my opinion, the, uh, um, the underappreciated and underrated Yo-Yo cartoon. Now, this trend is still being done today as well. Or not just today, but it's still being done every now and then. In comic books and on television. In fact, you know, one of the things that surprised me is that Archie Comics decided to take two of the 48-page super specials, Sonic super specials, the original 48-page ones, and dedicate them to a series of stories based on Sonic, Sally, Bunny, Antoine, Rotor, Tails, Knuckles, as kids. Yeah. They dedicated these two 48-page specials to Sonic and his friends as kids. They did. And that really surprised me, but it showed you that the trend was still there, that there's still a market to do that kind of stuff. And of course you had things like Baby Looney Tunes and, you know, the rest is history. But here on this edition of the Cartoon Flashback HD, getting back to the Pink Panther, like I said, Pink Panther couldn't avoid it. But the thing is what they, what some shows did to not really, you know, to kind of not really be like everybody else, was they would do something a little different. Instead of making Pink Panther a kid or a teenager like they did in Pink Panther and Pals, instead, they decided to make Pink Panther a father, a dad. And thus, in 1984, I think it was 1984 83, Pink Panther and Sons aired on Saturday mornings. Originally, Pink Panther and Sons aired on CBS, but I think the following season they were moved to ABC. And that was the one thing about animated shows at the time. Depending on who like you got depending on who you got to license to do them or to make them you know it it, re it really didn't matter who what network aired them sometimes a, net a network could have exclusive rights to them but a majority of the time that network wouldn't even care of you know if they last had it for a year and then you moved it to another network for another few years but anyway, Pink Panther and Sons came around and in 19, I think, 1990, uh, 1983-84, around, like I said, the time that this was really starting to get going. But like I said, the difference, the thing that I think Hanna-Barbera wanted to do at the time to differentiate this from the upcoming Flintstone Kids show and the Muppet Babies and Pup Named Scooby-Doo is they made Pink Panther a father and the focus went on his kids. Now I know some people might say, well that kind of sounds like 101 Dalmatians, the animated series, and several other shows. Well it does. But you see the thing was, Pink Panther himself would be involved in some of the stories. Not all of them, but he would be a part of them. And I think, I think I'm I'm not really sure and you could correct me on this. You, you can correct me on this. But I think at the time cuz I th I do vaguely remember watching this on television. I do. When when I first saw the intro uh which you can find on YouTube, I did vaguely start to I did remember vaguely seeing this at times. You know, I was 5 years old, 5 6 years old when it came out. Let's see, 1984, that's what it was, 1984, and it was broadcast on NBC, not, not CBS, but NBC. And, uh, like I said, I, I, like I said, I can't, I can't really remember, but I think I vaguely remember, 
vaguely remember that since it was called Pink Panther and Sons, one half of the show would be about the kids and the other half would be about the panther. Like I think maybe they had classic panther shorts in there or something. I'm not really sure. But uh, again, I'm not, again, I can't really say. Let's see, um, 10 to 11 minutes. Let's see. And they were 26, 26 episodes. But like I said, I think it was due to the fact that some of the episodes would be backed up by classic Panther shorts. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Because, according to Wikipedia, they aired on different weeks. So, that might be the case. Or maybe they replayed the previous week episode uh, after that, after the new one. I, I'm not really sure. But, you know, why would you call it Pink Panther and Son if you didn't want to focus half of that on the Panther? So... That, that's what I think, and that's what I think, honestly, in my opinion. Because, like I said, I can vaguely remember uh, watching it, and what I'm trying to do currently is work something out with uh, Mr.'s, Mr. 80's uh, DJ, his name is DJ, uh, and try to see if I can get copies of, of what he recorded. Uh, he said, basically, that they're not in the best, um, not in the best qual some of the later episodes are not in the best quality, but that's fine. You can't fault that because of the fact that these these shows are old. I mean, Panther and Sons is 31 years old, initially. When if, It's been 31 years since that show came out. And, God, that makes me feel old. But, um, you know, from 84 to 85, it was on NBC. And then for its final run, it was on ABC. So, like I said, um... I can't remember really the premise of how, or the format, how it was done, but I think because each episode was a 11 minute short, it would basically be uh, one with the Rainbow Panthers, Pinky and Panky, you know, those are the Panther, uh, pa Panther sons. Pinky was like the teenager, teenage son, and uh, Panky was like the little brother, little, literally the little brother. And, um,. And like I said, they would go, and like I said, it would only be like 10 to 11, basically around 11 minute episodes, so it makes you wonder, and like I said, I can vaguely remember if this, if maybe those final 11 minutes were filled with Pink Panther shorts, or Pink Panther short or something, I, I can't really recall, or else they did another short as well, and Wikipedia just doesn't have the information right. But anyway... Um, even if you don't remember the show, um, one thing that will stick in your head, though, if you one thing if you do remember it or you don't, one thing that you stick in your head, and it's stuck in my head, because this is what helped me re helped me recall vaguely watching this as a kid, and that's the theme song. That is the theme song to to the show. And if you don't remember the theme song, here. Let me play it for you.
Now, if that doesn't stick in your head or make you vaguely remember watching the show back in the 80s, if you grew up then like I did, then I don't know what does. And that basically, I think, is the one thing that anybody might remember from watching Pink Panther and Sons. Now, officially, it's not been released on DVD as far as I know. And I think the only people that would give would have the rights to that would be Warner Brothers. Because Warner Brothers, if, if I remember correctly, own Hanna-Barbera. They own the Hanna-Barbera cartoon library. So, that right there, unless it's owned by the Pink Panther franchise, which I think is a Panther franchise, I'm not really sure. Unless it's owned by the people that made the Pink Panther, Pink Panther and Sons is right now in kind of like a limbo state, like you don't know whether or not it will be on DVD or it won't be. I would like to see it on DVD. I mean, it's only 26 episodes, 26 mini episodes, basically making this a 13 episode season. Uh, but still, it'd be nice to see, to see it on DVD because I think, you know, if you, I think honestly, if you're going to bring the Panther to DVD and they've been doing it with the shorts and all that, I think you got to do it by bringing everything Panther wise to DVD, and that includes Pink Panther and Sons. You know, I know some people have their opinions about it, but like I said, you got to remember, this is at a time when a lot of studios were testing new ground. They were going in directions and doing things with their characters that, you th that looking back, you would say, with looking back at it now, you would consider cool, you would consider innovative, you know, fun to watch. Uh, and then on the other hand, you might consider being stupid and be a, a stain on what was a great franchise and not nece and shouldn't necessarily have been made. But still, it's one of those, like I said, situations that I think if you give it credit, I, not credit, but I think if you give it a chance, you might enjoy it. I mean, some people have said that this is a good show, that, you know, you think, you know, when you look at, you know, the characters like the Rainbow Panthers and all that, you think, oh, get along, gang, right? Well, people have said that this is far better than the Get Along Gang. That this, some have said that they put the Get Along Gang to shame, uh, if you will, but just because of the way they are. And the fact is what they do here, though, what is kind of emphasized as well, is you do have some kind of a, a love, not a lo not a love triangle, but more of a... A relationship going on with two main characters. Uh, Pinky, uh, who is the oldest, like I said, a teenager, seems to have a relationship going on back, sort of having a relationship with the main female lead called Chatty, who that, who's the purple feline, or the purple panther. So, and both kind of have the same feeling, kind of have feelings for each other, so it it kind of makes sense that, um, you know, that's one of the re that kind of makes sense when you think about it that, you know, why people would look at that and say it's better than, let's say, Get Along Gang or anything else that's similar to that in some ways. Because of the fact that did Get Along Gang ever put the, the main leader of the group, uh, I can't think of his name right now, did they put him with the, the cheerleading girl? I'm trying to think. I know the song's in my head right now. I know the song's in my head. Puma, I think is her name. Oh, Dottie. I can't think of it. Dottie or Puma. One of them. But, uh, like I said, um... Like I said, uh, did you ever see that happen? No. So, to me, in all honesty, this definitely kind of took a step up and did something that I don't think Get Along Gang did. Um, but overall, as far as I can remember from vaguely watching it, because like I said, I was five, and according to a lot of people I watch, I can remember a lot of stuff from even back then. Uh, but I'll tell you this, vaguely at five years old in 1984, yeah, I did watch that in morning cartoons, but... I can't remember everything, <laughs> you know. You know, so many to choose from, from CBS, ABC, NBC, syndication. 